Hi, I'm Dan Sion, and I'm here with Matt Ecott. We're both uh, technicians of Premier Equipment in Cortland. Uh, today we're going to be going over with you some of the uh, preseason checks uh, in terms of service and some of the uh, crop adjustments needed uh, before the uh, grain harvest. Uh, we have the uh, 7 Series uh, Draper platform here from Deere, and uh, we can start off by showing you just some of the quick things to check. So one of the first things you're going to want to check uh, is when you're about to hook the uh, combine up uh, to, the, to the header, we want to make sure that our multi-coupler is good and clean. Make sure all of your pins here, uh, our terminals are all clean. Uh, what happens if you get dirt and debris in there and you go to attach, it'll actually, it can push the pins back or it can push the seal out the back, uh, making room for other moisture and contaminants to get in there and corrode these pins. So you want to make sure this is good and clean. As you can see here, if you have, this is a perfect example of dirt getting in behind the poppets. The valve doesn't seal properly and you could get some leaks. Uh, sometimes they will uh, seat themselves, but a lot of times you end up having to replace these or cleaning them. So make sure that this is always good and clean. Use electrical contact cleaner. And if you have to, just use some compressed air to blow it clean. Um, also make sure that this fully latches and you'll see down here, your latch pins will come out here and that way the head is locked uh, to the feeder house. But make sure this is always, if you're going to work on the header at all underneath, make sure that you fully lift the feeder house all the way and engage your feeder house stop right here. Um, when you're going to hook your power shafts up here, make sure that your splines are nice and clean. This one here you can see just from sitting over the, uh, over the off season here, you get a little bit of corrosion and, uh, and uh, rust on there. So even if you just clean it up really good with a wire wheel, um, then maybe just put a th thin layer of lubricant on there, some fluid film or maybe some uh, really thin grease just to kind of keep the splines uh, lubricated. Makes it a lot easier for when you're going to attach your, uh, your power shaft to the reverser here. And also on here, just check, make sure that sometimes there's grease fittings on the actual universal joint. And you can see them lined up here. There's a hole here. You'll see a grease zerk in there as well that you should lubricate. It just makes uh, sliding and, or coupling and uncoupling the, uh, the drive shaft much easier that way. And uh, next we're going to talk about uh, checking our gear cases. The next thing you want to check is your gear cases. Now this gear case back here, your, your center gear case runs your, runs your, uh, your center feed roll. Um, brings it into the feeder house and up to the throat of the combine. So it's a little bit difficult to check. Um, you are supposed to check it with it lowered, but it makes it pretty difficult. So most times what we'll do is we'll check it with the header raised in the air. Um, again, just a standard 80, 80, 90 gear loop or gear oil. Uh, so make sure that that's you know, topped up as adequate. Check make sure there's no leaks or weeps anywhere in, in a, around the gear case at all. Um, just when you're in this area, just have a look at any of the uh, any of your lines and fittings, make sure that there's no leaks. Could ind indicate just a, uh, a bad crimp or a bad O-ring. Uh, so you want to make sure that's uh, you don't have any leaks that way uh, into your uh, your uh, drive gear case for your draper. Um, you want to make sure you check this with the header all the way on the ground. Uh, here's your check port here, and you know feel feel accordingly. You can see here you've got the uh, the gear lube uh, emblem there, so you know what to put in it. So it's pretty hard to mistake that. Up here, we got the radial, radial pin um, slip clutches here. Make sure they're greased. Um, if as something that's under greased uh, will tend to slip more than if it's well greased. That way, the way the way the pins actually come out inside the clutch. Um, over here, we have the uh, um, your Draper Draper belt roller. This is a drive for it here. So you want to make sure that this gear case, um, you know, there's no leaks around it. It's non-serviceable. It's a factory fill, um, so it's not intended to be uh, changed or flushed or anything. So um, just make sure again, you know, leaks anywhere that way. Um, and that should wrap up basically what we need to look at for, uh, for uh, gear cases and oil levels. And uh, we'll move on to uh, tensioning the draper belt. The next thing you want to check is your uh, draper belt tension, which you can see through this inspection door here. So just a matter of undoing the snap, opening the door. And this is pretty self-explanatory here. You want to be in the, uh, the green zone here. So make sure that this indicator is lined up uh, with, with there. And that way you know it's, uh, the draper has adequate tension. Um, I'll walk around here and I'll show you uh, how we can tension the draper belt. So you'll see this 24 mil or 15 16 uh, uh, hex bolt here. So by turning it clockwise, you're going to be tensioning the, uh, the draper belt. And it's just a matter of, you know, going back and rechecking that inspection door and making sure that that indicator is centered uh, uh, between the marks. Um, you'll want to check, just make sure all of your linkages and stuff are attached here. It can cause you, can cause you some issues, make sure they're not loose. It can skew some of the, uh, the voltage readings. Um, check, the, check the seals here on the uh, gear cases, 
um, six series uh, platforms uh, were greasable. I see these ones here on the seven series are maintenance free. The telescoping shaft here though does have a grease fitting. So make sure it gets a few few shots of grease there before, uh, before a startup. Just check your real lift cylinders just for wet spots around, around the cylinders here for any uh, obvious leaks. Um, and just maybe go through the range, raising and lowering the uh, reel just to make sure that the reel does lift easily. Um, and you can make adjustments here if, if required. Um, that should basically wrap up this side of the combine here. Um, the other side's going to be similar. Uh, this is a dual, dual drive knife, so you will have the exact same setup on the opposite side. So make sure you check uh, both sides when you're doing the preseason checks. So here we want to just maybe inspect the reel very quickly so we can look and see here we have a grease fitting back and behind there. So make sure that the, uh, the reel does get uh, a couple shots of grease before startup as well. You want to check your reel fore and aft cylinder again for leaks. Uh, make sure there's, uh, you know, it's not weeping or, or squirting out of here at all. That would uh, indicate an issue. Um, want to check, just go over your, your uh, reel fingers. Make sure that, uh, you know, they're all, uh, they're all, I guess, intact, not damaged, uh, can affect uh, feed performance. We want to see, uh, your, check your knife here, go over your knife sections and make sure they're all, uh, you know, you don't have any signs of, uh, any signs of wear or any broken uh, blades anywhere. Uh, check your guards for excessive wear. You may have to um, adjust your hold downs here at some point. Uh, you want to try to set the, the clearance here between the uh, actual knife section and the guard anywhere between 20 and 30 thou. Or uh, most people use a business card thickness to, uh, to kind of check that there. Um, it'll be pretty obvious if it's too loose, um, but if they're too loose, you could look at breaking, uh, breaking some of your knife section. So just give that a quick uh, once over. Over here on the right side of the, uh, of the Draper platform, we got our real drive motor here. So we want to just check the motor for any signs of, uh, you know, any signs of damage, any leaks anywhere on there. Uh, you want to check, uh, check your skid pads here. Just make sure that they're, uh, you know, they're not excessively worn because it'll wear into the, uh, into the bracketry here. So just make sure because anything that's, you know, worn badly will prevent the reel from moving fore and aft. Again, you can see your cylinders under here. You want to just check, the, uh, check for any obvious signs of leak leakage and make sure your, uh, your pins are secured in there. And again, we're back to the uh, same side. You can see the telescoping uh, drive shaft there uh, with the grease, grease fittings and whatnot. And if you're going to do any work on the reel, make sure that it's raised all the way up and you put your safety stop in to prevent the uh, reel from coming down and uh, injuring, injuring you. And that basically wraps up the service side uh, preseason checks on the uh, 7 Series Draper platform. Hi, I'm Matthew Ecott from uh, Cortland Premier Equipment Soaring. Um, we're going to go over the uh, 700 Series FD Draper head here. Um, and we'll uh, just go over the adjustments and stuff for pre-setup uh, in the field. Um, we're going to start with like these optional uh, row crop dividers that are available on the new uh, 700 Series heads. Um, 600 series you could uh, get a different option is available um, but it helps for uh, dividing that tangled mess in the fields. Um, we'll move along here to the uh, draper belt tension and it is probably one of the most uh, critical adjustments that need to be done. Um, as you can see you have the, the red zone, the green zone and the yellow zone. <clears throat> it needs to be properly adjusted daily. Um, as those belts stretch, uh, they need to be adjusted properly. You can have uh, a lot of damage to uh, belts and uh, they need to be checked regularly. <clears throat> we'll move along to the, this side here. Um, you, can, you have a spare knife down here that uh, will pot could potentially be used um, when uh, you have a knife that's broken or if you need uh, spare parts. Uh, some guys have it and some don't. It is an option on these uh, headers. We'll talk about uh, locking up your headers for grain. Um, there is this uh, lockup uh, mechanism that's got to be installed into the uh, float arms. Um, they do go right in here. Make sure you put them in the proper location. I've had guys put them in the lower side of the the stop here and it does not work. Um, moving around, adjustment of the uh, crop divider is uh, crucial. Um, it is done right here. 
Um, when you have the header down onto the ground, you would like to have about an inch and a half of clearance at the uh, divider point here. Um, there is also a uh, reel pitch adjustment, which is done here with the sandal, and then you move this cam as needed for the uh, reel pitch. Uh, the knife here is um, one of the most critical things that have to be adjusted when doing uh, grain crops. Um, we uh, advise uh, these hold downs be adjusted with a uh, business card of some sort. Um, and you just kind of want to make sure that they will fit underneath the uh, hold downs as needed. You can adjust this right here with this uh, 10 mil uh, screw as needed. Um, and you should uh, do the whole knife, uh, if not daily, weekly for sure. Um, another crucial part I want to touch on is the knife drive alignment, which is done right here. These two 18 mil bolts here, you uh, loosen them off and adjust the knife head up or down so that that knife travels in between the guards here. For when we are adjusting for off ground uh, cutting conditions, this is for like uh, small grains, uh, cereals and stuff, we like to uh, cut off the ground. So this system is an option from uh, John Deere and uh, a lot of guys are going with this system so they can run auto header height controls. Um, we need to activate these uh, auxiliary height sensors and uh, you do that by taking the small clip out of the back of the header of the arm here and lowering the arm down. Now these uh, auxiliary height sensors will need to be calibrated uh, when switching to them. Um, your uh, hydroflex pressure will have to be up and the header locked out. Um, 600 series heads, they uh, have to be plugged in on the back of the header. Um, so you have to make sure you do that. Okay, we're gonna go over the uh, calibration procedure uh, to uh, calibrate your uh, draper head to your combine. Um, it's the same procedure for uh, an, a, a 630 or 600 series head as well. Um, and it'll just kind of be a, a guideline that this should be done uh, before pre-season or anytime you change a head, um, it affects the performance of the machine. Uh, so we'll, uh, I'll kind of go and show you through this little screen here um, how to do that procedure. Um, you go to B here um, and when you, I recommend uh, doing a, uh, feeder house raise speed cal first. Um, you kind of uh, follow the display here. It says uh, bring it to high idle. So you're gonna do that and hit enter. And you're gonna follow the on-screen procedures. Hit continue when you've got your header on the ground. As long as your numbers are counting up down here, um, it is actually doing something and you can uh, kind of see your header raise. What this is doing is finding where uh, the header is beginning to move. Um, different size heads are different weight and need to be calibrated just before a harvest season.
they'll say calibration complete. You have now finished the feeder house raise cal. You hit enter to save the changes. And then we are gonna do the header cal, which is the second cal I recommend doing. And you hit enter when your header is on the ground. And you follow the instructions on the display. Now for new New S-Series combines, uh, they have uh, what they call a uh, um, hybrid mode, so you can use auxiliary height sensors and uh, the uh, Hydroflex mode. Hit enter when it says you want to proceed to the next step. And now it's going to ask you to lower your cutter bar pressure, which is done here at this switch and it comes up on the display and you want to, in, it's asking you to continue increasing your cutter bar pressure which is your hydroflex pressure then it will say at press and hold the header lower switch Calibration is complete. Enter. This concludes the uh, 700 and 600 series uh, Draper platforms. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, reach out to uh, Premier Equipment or uh, your local store.